Welcome to Craig's State Minister. Nice to see you. I'm glad you're back here with us in the Institute. You come for a couple days to talk, I know, about one particular neuralgic issue, the NSA. We, uh, we are concerned about it here at the Institute. Let's start with a very large question. You've been in transatlantic relations a while. I have, too. Do you see this as the most egregious, difficult, absolutely dangerous sem segment of, of German-American relations since the war, as many people maintain, or do you see this as a, uh, a passing phenomena that we can get over, but the question is how? Of course, we can and have to get over it, but it's certainly a problematic issue. It's something that we have to work on. It doesn't go away by itself. I think there was a misperception also by some people in the United States uh, saying, you know, over time, maybe after a few weeks or months, then uh, this will go away. It won't go away unless we work on it. And um, uh, there, I think we both have to, to see on both sides of the, of the Atlantic what our standards of data privacy is um, and how we can um, uh, also try to introduce something like a cost-benefit um, analysis when it comes to activities of the intelligence community. It's always interesting for somebody who does intelligence professionally to get more and more information and to get an extra bit of information by some, by some means. But if you found out and if the public um, knows about uh, the means and, and the instruments you have to use uh, also against your friends, then there will be an our political costs. And I believe, uh, and I also heard in, in some, some talks here, that uh, also uh, there are Americans who don't like the idea of American services um, uh, yeah. spying against Germany. So here, I think the cost-benefit analysis has, has not been done properly, or maybe not at all. And this has, or I would hope that this, this changes. Uh, but it doesn't mean that we don't have um, to cooperate. Um, actually, I was not only here, and I'm not only here to talk about the NSA and their activity, but also about, for example, the problem of um, foreign fighters in Syria, also right. in Iraq. And this is one of the, ma unfortunately, many examples um, of international crises uh, where we immediately see how important this intelligence cooperation also is between uh, the American side and the European, especially the German side. And um, this forces us and compels us um, to get this problem solved. I mean, there were some people at the uh, level of, of absolute uh, shock and, 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 quite frankly, anger with the United States mm -hmm. um, who were saying uh, we're trying to spy on every citizen between Schleswig, you know, bis in the Allgäu. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, some other people were saying, wait a minute, we've got some problems out there. And I think that, if I'm not mistaken, um, was it the case that when the Ukraine thing began to heat up, the Ukraine conflict, and then um, the M17, MA-17 went down, do you think that changed the Germans a little bit in their attitudes toward the need for this kind of surveillance activity, uh, both Germany and the American cooperating? Do you think that made a dent in the, uh, mm -hmm. in the response to the original uh, Snowden effect? Of course, it's quite sad to look at these incidents like in Ukraine, or also what we witness now in, in, in Syria and um, in Iraq. In, in a way that, that we need such uh, wake-up calls to see how important our cooperation is. But of course, this certainly has also the effect that we um, uh, realize how important military and intelligent cooperation is. And uh, I would also say that most Germans never thought that um, you know, every single phone call in Germany is, is tapped and listened uh, right. in uh, um, by, the, um, uh, by the NSA or some other agency in, in America, but the Shias at least possible size of, of the programs has, has um, um, shocked people or at least uh, made them think about it. And um, what contributed also to this um, public um, uneasiness about this is certainly um, the way um, Edward Snowden conducted the whole affair. It was also quite clever in terms of marketing yeah. uh, what he wanted to, wanted to say and wanted to do. He didn't um, say everything at once and reveal any information, every information that he had um, uh, in, in one week. But every second week there was another revelation, another uh, information, some things uh, very hard to prove, but even harder to disprove. And this kept this story going on. And so it's in this sense, I think, necessary also to focus on the purposes why we collect some information. And right. we can still discuss whether we collect too much. In the case of the United States, I would say, uh, the NSA um, is going overboard in some circumstances. Also, what uh, the CIA did with a, a member of the BND in, in Germany was not proper, I would, I would say, and among uh, close allies. But it's um, 
always very important to see you know why it's sometimes necessary to collect information. It's not a, it's it's uh, not because uh, people in these agencies uh, are bored and they want to have some <laughs> uh, some tasks yeah. uh, to work on. Uh, but it's really about our security, about stopping terrorists, um, uh, 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 having successful attacks um, on our people. So this, in this sense, it's it's quite helpful. But it's of course very sad that we, um, um, you know, have to discuss this on, on the background of uh, what happened in Ukraine and happens uh, in the Levant. If you were sitting together with President Obama, make believe I'm President Obama, or for that matter, Secretary Kerry, which maybe yeah. you've done. Um, what would you recommend that the American government do to try and develop uh, the kind of dialogue you've just described? What, what can be done to help this process uh, be a, focused on the right issues and not the wrong issues? First, I think it's important to, to engage in the dialogue. I think this already has been done to a certain extent with a cyber dialogue conducted and, and organized by, by the two um, foreign offices of, of the two countries, for example. Um, also analyze, uh, analyze how transparent you can be. Of course, you can't be uh, fully transparent when it comes to the activities of, of in intelligence agencies. But some things you can reveal, some things you can talk about uh, and, and explain. Obama already has um, uh, declared some reforms like um, better legal recourse for non-US citizens against activities of uh, intelligence agencies. It would be good that if it was clear that um, there are now um, procedures, also legislative procedures, um, fulfilling these um, these promises. Of course, it's always very difficult in the, in the American system between Indeed. Congress and the president. Indeed. But at least there have to be the the, the honest attempt to um, to to live on this uh, on this promise. And uh, then, on top of it, um, I would, uh, as I said, um, say the idea of a cost-benefit analysis would be helpful. Uh, to say, okay, um, some information might be interesting, but does it really justify um, uh, the alienation of a, of a close ally? And some information might better get by asking for this information. And um, if you have a trusted relationship, you can ask and thereby, of course, also reveal that you don't know, otherwise you wouldn't ask, without being afraid uh, that you might weaken yourself in, in, the, in the eyes of your, of your partner. This, I think, can be done. This trustful relationship can be established not only uh, among these uh, so-called five eyes, but also with other close allies within NATO, uh, other partners across the Atlantic. It's interesting, in a way, Gunter, that we have this, shall we say, problem that we're trying to solve mm -hmm. 25 years after the wall came down this fall. Uh, a, a phenomena 25 years ago that wouldn't have happened had it not been for the German-American mm -hmm. uh, uh, partnership yeah. that made it occur, or at least helped make it occur. Mm -hmm. And I just wonder, I, I think you put your finger on something when you say that there is a diffusion of people, or at least a popular perception of this problem that's out there now that maybe wasn't there even then. I mm -hmm. mean, East Germans have an experience with their Stasi, and mm -hmm. um, that's for sure. But I think that one of the things that always occurs to me in these discussions is that exactly what you just said. What do we have the tools for? Why do we need them? And what do we use them for? And I guess rather that also is a little bit of an imperative in Germany as well as it is here to explain that. And am I right in saying that that's a dialogue that Germans have to have with themselves? Absolutely. I think this um, necessity to explain why we need certain instruments um, for the intelligence agencies, right. I think it's even more important, more pressing uh, uh, in Germany. Because Germans are very much concerned about data privacy, right. more so than even on the, the rest basis of, of that experience, more so yeah, than even the rest right. of Europe, uh, more yeah. so than uh, than the Americans. Correct. And um, we had or still have a lot of problems with the idea of data retention. We mm -hmm. were the only country in the European Community that didn't um, transpose the um, data retention directive into the national law. Now, of course, the European Court of Justice has stopped this this type of of, of instrument, not the uh, very idea of data retention. Right. And it shows that we have to uh, do a much better job in explaining to the public why we need certain, um, uh, certain instruments. And uh, this is, um, cannot be taken for granted that um, uh, one or two experts in government say we need it. We have to explain it and have to convince the public. Right. That's, I think, a job that we both share on this Absolutely. side. And as long as you keep coming back, we'll be able to do that better. Thank you for coming. Looking Good to forward. see you again. Thank you. See you in Berlin. Thank you for having me. Thank you very much.